Mike Shoe Smith, the executive editor of PNN News and Ministry Network. Thank you so much for being with us today, Mike. A uh, lot of things going on in the world. One, yes. yeah, one thing I, I know that you wanted to talk to us about, and I'm I'm interested to hear this. So you you're talking about the reasons uh, why you think, and a lot of other people think, that uh, Michelle Obama may be getting ready to make a run in 2020 for the White House. Lord yes. God, help us. Please forgive us if we have sinned. Please do not put Michelle Obama. I'm praying out loud. Is are we on the air? <laughs> Please, Lord, do not let this happen. But anyway, go ahead and talk to us, man. Talk to us. Well, I think as we examine what's going on in the Democrat Party, you know, with uh, Al Franken's resignation yeah. yesterday or announcement that he will, he hasn't resigned yet. He said. In coming weeks, he, he has decided to resign. Why? Mm-hmm. I mean, in coming weeks, what does that even mean? We don't yeah. even know, right? And in coming weeks, but, it could be months and months. And yeah. the, I don't know. Did you hear his announcement? Not a single apology. No, yeah. I'm sorry to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't, thing, but that didn't surprise me. Yeah, no, the whole thing just reeked of insincerity. And, uh, you know, the, what did he do prior to the people of Minnesota electing him to be their representative in Congress? He put on male diapers and pranced around in front of a camera. Yeah, this was this was his qualification to be a United States congressman representing the great state of Minnesota. I mean, come on, Minnesota, get your act together up there. Anyway, I love Minnesota, by the way. Uh, great people up there. But uh, I got to be thinking about that, and then I got to thinking about you know uh, uh, Matt Lauer getting fired and uh, and John Conyers retiring. Why are they? Sh- why are they? muscling these people out, Carl, all the libs, they're muscling, all these people that have even a, a, even a little bit of, of anti-woman, uh, anti-suffrage, you know, tendencies as far as their a- actions towards women in the past, why are they muscle, why are they silencing all these people? Is it, well, we got to get these people out, we got to get these people out, because I believe, as do many other people, the American Thinker actually had an article out today where they tend to agree with us on this, that there is a greater strategy here, like the long con, right? Yeah. There's, some, there's a bigger picture happening here. And I believe that I said on the radio in 2016 when we had the Hillary Clinton meltdown, you know, with the, with the, with the health scare and, and the, you know, the email thing and all that, I was surprised that they did not push uh, Michelle Obama in her place. I was surprised that didn't happen. But now I think we're, they're setting the stage for Michelle Obama in 2020. And so I was going to do the work and compile all of the reasons why I believe that they're going to do that. And lo and behold, up comes this article from WND, uh, written by none other than Joseph Farah himself, the, the owner and founder of, of WorldNet Daily, now known as WND. Uh, he compiled 12 reasons why he says she will run in 2020. Okay, here we go. You ready? Uh, number one, she outpolls all other Democrats. According to a Zogby poll last month, she leads the pack of p- potential Democratic candidates, despite her insistence that she will never run. The only others even closer, Biden and Sanders, two very old white men. Okay, that's number one. Uh, number two, she wouldn't be the first to deny her real intention. Twice, Hillary Clinton ruled out uh, running for president and then did exactly that in 2008 and then again in 2012. It was the smart thing to do then, and it's the smart thing to do now, according to Joseph Farah. Number three, there's simply no one else, Carl. And this was the argument I made back in last year. There is nobody else. Right. Uh, and I, I made the case, I believe I did either in article form or live on Freedom Friday, that she could have she could have given Donald Trump a run for his money. I believe she could have she could have been a real challenge to him just because she's all glamour over substance, right? There's nothing there except that she's an Obama, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's smart to play hard to get, number four, and that's what she's doing. It's way too early for any serious candidate. This is important to hear this now. It's way too early for any serious candidate to throw his or her hat into the ring. Any candidate that does that now is not a serious candidate, according to Farah. And by the way, we should trust Farah's opinions on this, I believe. Uh, number five, even on an unauthorized, like, fake, fake Facebook page, she's got nearly 500,000 su- uh, supporters. Impressive, no? She's also the darling of Twitter. Listen, I went to Facebook and I looked this up. Uh, Joe didn't, uh, Joseph Farah did not go deep enough here. There is one page, Michelle Obama for President, that does have 500,000 subscribers. I'm actually looking at another one here with almost 2 million subscribers. 
and they have posted a picture on their Facebook page. It's simply Michelle Obama for president, uh, where they have Donald Trump's Make America Great, Great Again hats, the red hats with the white uh, printing on them, mm-hmm. and the exact same font and everything. What does the hat say, Carl? It says, Make Obama President Again. Mm-hmm. Make mm-hmm. Ob- <laughs> You're going to start seeing more and more of these hats. Uh, I mo- almost Mopa. <laughs> Mopa. 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 <laughs> Hey, and, and, and you know, but here's the other thing. We have to wonder, of course, for Michelle, it's possible that she has that many subscribers or likes or whatever you call it. Exactly. But we have to wonder about the algorithms and all right. of the fake algorithm rhythms that Twitter and Facebook and YouTube have used before. And have just, just to give you an example of that, the PP7, the PNN Network Facebook page has almost, well, it has uh, 7,300 followers. But those are, that's 100% organic. Yes. Now, I get emails all the time which say, listen, we can sell you uh, 10,000, 100,000, a million Facebook likes for X amount of dollars. Yeah, I know. You've told and me that, about that. But we don't, right, we, we don't do that. We do no, not do that. That's no. what they're doing. They're doing that on Twitter. They're doing that on Facebook. That's what they're doing, yeah. by the way. Yeah. She detest, number six, she detests Trump and needs to restore the Obama legacy yeah. he, uh, Donald Trump, quote unquote, stole. Yeah, no, yeah really... not only did he steal it, <laughs> but he didn't steal it, but he is dismantling it. Go ahead. If she really perceives she could win, why wouldn't she run? Her yeah. children will be grown up by then, Carl. Mm-hmm. She will be bored in another year out of the limelight. Number seven, no matter what she says, she adores the spotlight. Mm-hmm. Look at all the hype she gets. Look at all the interviews she, she gives. Look at all the stories urging her to, her to run. Not thinking about it is not even believable, right. according to Joseph Farah. Number eight, despite what she says, she loves politics and government. She's never going to back. She's never going back to law. She won't be content on the sidelines for long. Number nine, she's not shy about upstaging her husband. Remember all the banter between Barack and Michelle during their years in the White House. She would upstage him as frequently as Cher upstaged Sonny. <laughs> Number ten, she really loves. She really believes she's a role model, Carl. Mm-hmm. How many articles have you seen about what a great role model she is for young women, especially younger women of color? Mm-hmm. She believes her own press clippings. The media adore her almost as much as she adores herself. Oh yeah, but not quite. No doubt. <laughs> That's a br- this is a brilliant <laughs> article by Joseph. Go ahead, keep going. Oh, oh, Joseph. Yeah, he he saved me a lot of work, I'll tell you. Number 11, she has a proven... This is important. This this, this one's really important, by the way. She has a proven political team. Her husband, right? He's got an enormous policy machine out there, and it's just sitting in the wings, just waiting for somebody to pull the trigger on Michelle Obama. One thing you can say about Barack Obama is that he ran two great campaigns. He didn't do it alone. He did it with a clever group of operatives, plenty of grassroots support, great press, and terrific social media. That team can be reassembled, according to Joseph Farah. In fact, they are waiting in the wings for marching orders. It really might be the best the Democrats could ever do. Number 12, finally, she wants to be virtually drafted. Remember that Obama strategy of leading from behind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's exactly what Michelle Obama is positioning herself to do in politics. It might just happen. It would solve many real problems for the Democratic Party, which is in shambles right now, according to Joseph Farah. I think that that they're going to bring back this uh, this uh, this uh, suffragette movement from the teens, the 19 teens, which gave us uh, uh, the women's vote in 1920, mm-hmm. and uh, the, the the women's suffrage movement is is being. Uh, as I was listening to uh, Al Franken resign, this is this is what came to me. Uh, in in my head, you know, for what it's worth, is that there, this is a revival of the of the women's suffrage movement from the teens, which guilted men into giving the women whatever they wanted. I mean, women were withholding uh, sex from their husbands. They just made, uh, you know, Limbaugh calls them the nag for a reason because they nagged their way into government, into politics, mm-hmm. and um, you know, say what you want about that. Uh, men need to stand up for the, the, the muscular, masculine aspect of what the country needs as a whole. You know, because we, we have now, what do we have now? We, women are running everything now, and which is, it's okay that women have a say in my mind, but they can't run everything. Because now we have legalized 
abortion, legalized gay marriage. I mean, it's all about feelings and emotions with these women. And so men need to be a balance to all of this. But men are being shoved to the side. Matt Lauer, uh, you know, all these guys, they're all being shoved to the side, and the women are stepping in to take over. And I believe that Michelle Obama will be the spearhead of a new women's suffrage movement to just fully take over government in America. Well, and see, we're going to have to take a break in a minute, but, but Mike, what you're saying just puts within me this, this angst that, Lord God, help Donald Trump to clean the swamp out. And here's why. Because if you just threw Michelle Obama up against Donald Trump, and, and if everything was done honestly, I don't think Michelle Obama could beat him. I just don't think so, especially right now with the economy soaring and the, you know, the Jerusalem and Israel and the military and the border walls. And I mean, I just don't think she could beat him. I, I mean, I, I, there's too many powerful things happening that have endeared, you know, tens and tens and tens of millions of people to Donald Trump. But what terrifies me is that by the year 2020, if we don't have that drop, that swamp drained, I know so much from this Obama fraud investigation about deep state and infiltration into elections offices. At, listen, listen, in case people think I'm conspiracy theorizing, remember during the election prior to the presidential election, the state of Georgia announced this was in this was in mainstream media. They announced that they discovered that their election process, I think it was during the midterm election, was hacked by the Department of Homeland Security. And the way they found out about it was because they had um, subbed out the protection, the hacking protection of their uh, de State Department of Elections to a foreign company who specializes in this, and they called them up during the election and say, hey, you guys are being hacked. Your elections office is being hacked. Well, who's hacking it? The Department of Homeland Security. You right. remember that? I do. Okay, so so take that fact and add to it what I know and what Zulo knows and what Arpaio knows that we cannot disclose yet. And I'm terrified that Michelle Obama will be the next president of the United States if this comes to about, not because she will stomp Donald Trump, but because the deep state will make sure it happens, especially after what they consider to be the fiasco of Hillary Clinton losing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I think so. I'll just add a number 13 before we go to break. Number 13, the demonic forces at work here. Oh, yeah, no it's, doubt. The, I mean, that, that, they have that demonic power going for them, the, the Obama family, and I think that uh, that makes Michelle Obama a strong contender for 2020. Yeah, no, no doubt.